horrible today. The flagre eruption is more dangerous than Vesuvius. Nonetheless, Vesuvius remains active, and one day, it will blow again. On the way up, the geologist Giovanni Macedonio of the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology INGV, who was guiding our party, pointed out the ruined topography of past eruptions. When Vesuvius goes off, he explained, it won't be a trickle. In the past, entire hillsides have been blown to pieces. Beneath Naples, the African tectonic plate is colliding and descending beneath Europe, creating a more combustible mixture of magma and gas than volcanoes in places like Iceland or Hawaii. Here we have very violent eruptions, Macedonio explained in a talk at the summit. In terms of energy we're talking about several nuclear bombs. With the difference that with nuclear explosions, the energy is released in less than a millisecond, here that energy is released over several days. But when we calculate the energy in these events, we're looking at tens, hundreds or even thousands of Hiroshimas. Anticipating that threat, Naples officials have organized the city into zones. Those in the red zone must evacuate if the threat level rises high enough. Each of these neighborhoods is twinned with a canton elsewhere in Italy, which will take in people fleeing disaster. Navigating Naples' chaotic traffic and jammed streets, it's difficult to imagine how that might happen in practice. One geologist I spoke to during my trip suggested that, if a warning came, it might well be quicker to walk to safety than try to drive. Later that day, I visited the observatory where geologists keep tabs on Vesuvius and the other volcanoes of Campania, 24 hours a day. Once housed on the slopes of Vesuvius itself, the monitoring station now operates from a nondescript office block not far from the city center. Inside, though, it looks like a space mission control room, with multiple screens across two walls, showing seismological graphs, maps and cameras focused on venting gases far away. It was here I saw hints of a far bigger volcanic threat than Vesuvius, which geologists are currently keeping a close eye on. Outside the building, you might not know it's there, but here on a giant screen you can see evidence of its presence. A map of the city covered with swarms of colored dots. They are tremors caused by magma and gases shifting deep underground, and in recent years they have been felt frequently across Naples. The cause? Beneath the city, and indeed most of the bay, there's an enormous caldera, a type of volcanic crater that collapsed after a violent eruption thousands of years ago. It's called the Campi Flegre, Flegre in fields, and it is 12 to 15 kilometers wide, 7.5 to 9.5 miles. Unlike Vesuvius, it has no visible cone, and so goes largely unnoticed day to day, but with so many people living on top of it, it's considered one of the most dangerous in Europe. One eruption attributed to it 39,000 years ago was so big that some of the material ended up in Siberia. While making our film, I toured this monster with the geologist Vincenzo Mora of the University of Naples Federico II, who lives and works on the volcano, within Naples' red zone. He picked me up from the train station on his scooter, and as we zipped in between busy traffic, I realized that he probably has a higher appetite for risk than me. People aren't really aware that we're walking on a volcano on a daily basis, that we're inside a volcano, he told me. A third of the caldera is submerged underwater but the remaining two-thirds are under people's homes and businesses. It's difficult to see the full extent of Campi Flegre, it's too big to take in unless you're flying above the bay. But we stopped off at one part of it, a place called the Solfatara, where Mora showed me a white, steaming sulfurous landscape, like the surface of an alien world. <laughs>